Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video and today I'm doing a review of Doctor Who Emissary of the Daleks by Andrew Smith. Sorry um, beforehand for the really really terrible lighting. Um, again, as I probably said in my Night Thoughts review, it's sort of winter 2019 of this recording and so, you know... Any time after four, <laughs> it's like dark. So yeah. Um, also, sorry if I can't really remember a lot of this story. Um, I was quite tired when watching it, and just generally kind of yeah, tired really. So, but firstly, going through the packaging, you have, or the cover even. Uh, you have like this wartime like uh, sign there. You've got these sort of interesting uh, sort of. <laughs> symbols there, some Daleks that look like either from Resurrection of the Daleks or Genesis. Uh, I want to say Resurrection because of the sort of silver bits between some of the things uh, and that. And then you've also got a planet of the uh, Daleks, sort of uh, really interesting black and gold one. Um, you've got Colin Baker as Sixth Doctor and Nicola Bryan as Perry. Um, and then, yeah, you've got, obviously, the reversible cover, so I've got the sort of uh, 1980s sort of uh, traditional sort of Doctor Who logo and all that. You've got BBC Doctor Who, um, Brand New Adventures, full cast audio drama. On the spine, you've got BBC Doctor Who, Emissary of the Daleks, picture of Colin Baker there. Uh, 254, meaning uh, it's the 254th uh, release in the month range, and then the little big finish little logo there. On the back, you've got the blurb. Uh, feel free to pause that if you want to try and read it. Um, and that, and then you've also got the cast list and the runtime, which is two hours. Um, and then on the inside, you've of course got the discs, uh, as well as uh, available other releases you may enjoy, and then lots of other lovely Seventh Doctor stories, uh, which I've reviewed two of those. I've reviewed I Am Bright and Hour of the Cybermen. I've got Lure of the Nomad, but I've not got round to reviewing it yet. Um, and then, and then yeah, and then there's some other ones more recently, sort of uh, month of range releases. I really did enjoy this story. It felt very sort of. Um, epic in scale from what I remember of, of listening to it. Um, Colin Baker is, he's, he's good in this. He's not, you know, I wouldn't say he's 10 out of 10. He's sort of, he, he works in the plot where he needs to work, if that makes sense. Like there's no real oomph to his performance. He's not, you know, I don't know. It's just, he's not bad, but he's not, you know, 10 out of 10 here. Um, as for the Daleks, though, I do feel like they are pretty good, you know, sort of above average and, and really sort of strong foreboding. Um, you know, they feel like they've had quite a bit of energy put into them. And that, and I love the Dal uh, the Supreme-like Dalek, the Dalek leader -y type one, who Nicholas Briggs, as always, has this way of really, you know, giving a lot into it, putting a lot into his performances so that they... Um, Certain Daleks sound very unique and different, and that, and this is no different from any of the other, the plethora of very unique, different Daleks in the Big Finish sort of Doctor Who, um, for lack of a better term, back catalogue or mythology, and 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 that you know, um, I've always really liked the Dalek, uh, Supreme Dalek from Planet of the Daleks, uh, the black and the gold. I think they just contrast each other so well. Um, that is a really cool design that, honestly, I'd really love to see in the new series uh, come back. And that, um, so yeah, I really like the Supreme Dalek, very foreboding, very intimidating, very, really good performance from Nicholas Briggs and that. On the other hand, though, the other Daleks, the sort of normal Daleks, are just sort of meh, you know, um, and that, but to be fair, there's more of a sort of higher rank Dalek, so it kind of makes sense. Um... And then also Nicola Bryant as uh, Perry Brown, I think that's her second name, as the companion. Um, she's actually really good in this. This might be the first and only... No, first and only Six Doctor Perry story I've listened to and all reviewed on the channel. I could be completely wrong in, in saying that, so if you know the answer, please do feel free to comment. 
uh, down below uh, your, uh, you know, hopefully your knowledge on whether or not I have actually reviewed a Six Doctor and Perry story before. I can't remember doing that, but I mean, ID might be one. I genuinely can't remember. It's been years since I've listened to and or reviewed that one, and. Um, and yeah, she's she's outstanding. She's really good in this. I mean, she has a few decent moments. I just feel like Nicola Bryant is giving it her all, though. Um, not to say that Colin Baker doesn't. It just it feels like she's really sort of, I don't know, like really comfortable with Colin, really comfortable with the script and, and the atmosphere of probably working with Big Finish and that. And just generally, you know, like that torture scene, uh, spoiler alert, but that there's a torture scene sort of thing, and that almost feels like, you know, sort of like Daisy Ridley being tortured in Last Jedi or, or, or something, you know, she's, she's giving it her all in various scenes to, to, to what she's doing in that, um, and I really like this sort of world, uh, let me just check what the world's called again, <laughs> um, O Omnia, I think it's called, the, the sort of world, I really like this world, I really love the concept and idea of like these truth tellers who are these sorts of char <coughs> characters who can remember whole chapters and, and that, or you know, mass pieces of text that were once written down in these written books because the Daleks fear the idea of these um, people on this planet having knowledge about their past and they have book burnings and and that and um or at least the Daleks conduct and or probably uh you know sort of insist that the uh the population partake in these book burnings so they have no recollection of the past and also it's forbidden to like write or anything or probably teach the next generation to write, you know. Um there's a lot of depth and a lot to unpack in this sort of story. It's a very big, sort of ambitious is probably the right word, um, sort of four-part story. It feels epic in scope and, and in scale. Um, and that it has a very emotional ending. And that very um, sort of almost reminiscent of like Earthshock sort of levels of, of, of stuff. Um and that and but in a Dalek story it also feels like maybe after the fact that Andrew Smith wrote Hour of the Sidemen that cracking story with the Sixth Doctor that clearly Big Finish loved that or knew that that would be a really big uh, success and uh, and that or, or, or they really liked it at least even if some fans may have not uh, liked it um, even though I did and I think Petway Smith 11 also did and but anyway, yeah, um, basically what I was getting at with com uh, mentioning Hour of the Sidemen, I get the feeling that they thought, okay, well, we've given Andrew Smith, um, you know, free reign to do the Sidemen and, and that, and he smashed that out of the park. Let's give him the Daleks, see what he can do with those um, shouty boys, as it were. And uh, yeah, I, I really love the cliffhanger of part one. You know, um, it's it's nothing really inventive. It's just the way that it was done, and probably just because I wasn't expecting it, because again I was probably nearly half asleep, um, that it kind of just came out of nowhere, and and it kind of resolves itself pretty quickly in part two, which I don't mind. Uh, but again, it it was really cool. There's um there's another cliffhanger. I think the cliffhanger to part three, which. I can't remember what it is, but I remember liking it, um, which I know sounds bizarre and really stupid and dumb, but yeah. Um, parts of this story kind of remind me of uh, Destiny of the Daleks, which if you've watched Destiny of the Daleks, maybe you might know what I'm referring to in so much as there's mining sort of scenes and, and things like that. and. And yeah, that just sort of kind of sounds really interesting, or was really interesting. There was a plot twist with one of the characters who, spoiler alert, but we thought was good, and then they were bad, and that really felt like a sort of a bit of a gut punch, and I, I felt like that person was pretty much a dick for doing that, you know, sort of portraying uh, the Doctor and the TARDIS team. And one of the people who is a lot is uh, part of the sort of rebel alliance or rebel sort of thing that obviously the Doctor and Perry are part of. 
um, is connected to the emissary of the Daleks very heavily and that, and I won't ruin how and why and whatnot, but yeah, but like, it it was very interesting and it, it was a very good story and, and, and that, and very, as I say, very multifaceted, very layered, or, or, or it, it definitely feels like a story you'd need to watch more than, uh, I need to listen to more than once. Um, and this is just my initial thought, thoughts uh, listening to it today. Um, I might also be very tired because I've also just done earlier today um, a what felt like a bit of a behemoth of a video uh, trying to dissect series 12 uh, or the series 12 trailer for, for the new series. And so, yeah, like uh, my attention is a bit all over the place, if you can imagine. Oh, as you can imagine, so yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a really good sort of story. Um, again, there are some, I think there are there's part two's cliffhanger or one of the parts, one of the cliffhangers was very weak. Uh, with sort of, you know, the the mining place. Oh my god, it's it's gonna crumble down on top of us out of the ceiling, and then nothing really happens. It literally isn't really a threat in part in the next part, so I thought that was a bit weak, um, again, Colin Baker isn't bad, but he's not, you know, he's not firing on all cylinders as I felt like he was in, say, something like Hour of the Sidemen, or, I can't think of another story he's firing on all cylinders in, but off the top of my head, yeah, this one, again, he's, he's not bad, he's not, you know, sort of, uh, terrible, but he's not, he's not brilliant, Oh, he's not 110%. I, I Honestly, I think for a better pure performance uh, from Colin Baker, I'd say maybe something like uh, Curse of Davros might be a better uh, sort of story, especially if you want more of a of a sort of um, angrier Six Doctor. If anything, this Six Doctor feels a lot more just sort of mellowed out and, and chilled out, um, almost uh, akin to that of maybe even Peter Davison, which is kind of odd because... Even I feel like Peter Davison kind of got a bit more riled up by the Daleks, but um, but you know different things rile up different doctors and different scenarios, and you know you can't always have that same sort of um, reactionary sort of thing from every version of the Doctor or that one Doctor even. You know Davros maybe to the Sixth Doctor more of a menace and more of a, a formidable foe and and a threat in his mind uh, than say the Dalek Supreme leadery person in this story um but then say the seventh doctor if he saw the, the this 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 dalek because of these events now if the seventh doctor saw this dalek that he might be more you know for lack of a better term pissed than say if he saw davros you you never know but yeah honestly uh overall i'd give emissary of the daleks a nine out of ten um a really strong sort of as i say big ambitious bold uh, epic sort of uh, story with a lot of twists and turns and a lot to unpack and digest and and uh, process and, and definitely a story you'd probably need to listen to a second time. Um, so yeah, 9 out of 10 uh, for Emissary of the Daleks. Thanks for watching, comment, rate and subscribe.